patients will come to us uh, to see us for issues mainly dealing with uh, sleep disordered breathing, things like obstructive sleep apnea, central sleep apnea, hypoventilation. Uh, they'll also come to see us for other disorders, things like insomnia, narcolepsy, anything relating to sleep and issues during sleep, whether it's uh, respiratory breathing related or uh, any kind of issues they may have uh, with their brain as far as sleep goes. My name is Jonathan and this is my life as a sleep technologist. My father was actually in sleep and he had been in sleep for a while in the company that he worked for. I was looking for a position or a sleep technologist. I got on the job training through them and that's how I actually got started. You could go through a process called the A-step uh, which uh, consisted of uh, various modules and then you had to have 18 months of clinical experience before you could sit and take your registry exam. Uh, they do offer uh, associate's degree programs, very similar to x-ray or ultrasound that are very similar uh, in that, that they provide the education and then an opportunity to take the exam uh, afterwards. The A-STEP program that I took was actually something I took online. Yeah, it was a series of modules, uh, basically online courses uh, and various things sleep related. After a number of years working where I was and getting my certification, uh, my license, my registry, I decided to move here because of the opportunities they provided here. So it's a sleep study, so it is run overnight. When I come in, I check my patient paperwork just to see the name of the patient, the patient type, uh, so I can get my supplies prepared depending on if there's any therapeutic interventions that I need to perform, uh, that sort of thing. So I'll go over all, my, all of my paperwork, I'll get all of my equipment set up, and then we do our evening huddle, which is all the technologists and the physicians uh, make a conference call, and that way we can describe our patient, our type of study, uh, any therapies involved, any questions we may have, uh, so that they get answered and all and the study types are updated to the most appropriate. Um, then after that, uh, do patient intake, which consists of uh, getting the patient, doing a sleep history questionnaire, just questions about how they sleep at home regularly, um, you know, height and weight, that kind of thing. And then after that, we have the setup process, which includes applying all of the electrodes. Uh, we do nearly a full 1020 uh, EEG setup, and we also apply electro EKG electrodes for the heart, uh, respiratory belts, uh, EMG uh, muscle electrodes for the legs, and then a nasal cannula uh, to measure air pressure and a thermistor to measure airflow. And then after that, we do our monitoring. Uh, which consists of at least eight hours of recording time, which uh, during that period, I'll, it will either be doing a diagnostic, which is basically just an observation study, or we'll do therapies uh, such as CPAP, BiPAP, oxygen titrations, uh, that sort of thing. Then in the morning, do the uh, disconnect the patient, do all of my paperwork, uh, which includes summaries, um, worksheets, uh, basically detailing what happened over the course of the night, and um, then we'll do the morning huddle, which we discuss any equipment issues we may have had or any uh, medical issues we may have had throughout the night. Then I go home. Here at Texas Children's, it's about 13 hours. Because uh, I get here about 6, I'll leave about 7, 7.15 in the morning. When I'm off, uh, it's real nice. I get to uh, spend more time with children. You know, I get to pursue, uh, pursue any other education I may be. Uh, you can work another job if that is what you want to do. You know, there's plenty of opportunities to do other things when your work time is so consolidated into those three days. The best parts of the career uh, that I have right now is definitely the, the patient interaction, patient care. Uh, I love dealing with children specifically, but I like dealing with people in general. Uh, you got to be able to, uh, you got to really enjoy talking to people and meeting people and being able to work with them within uh, some of their disabilities. Uh, you know, that's a key part of really any medical field, but sleep specifically, uh, because a lot of times uh, when they come in and their sleep is not right, it affects them during the day. So they can be irritable and sleepy all the time and, and things like that. So it's just being very compassionate and understanding in regards to uh, patients. Definitely uh, beef up your communication skills because it'll help you out. You know, I'm a, a night tech, but they do have a night supervisor position. They also have uh, like directors of the sleep lab, sleep program managers, that kind of thing. And those are all people who have been in sleep uh, and may have also other degrees, you know, things like business management, healthcare information management, that kind of thing. Um, there are also lateral moves you can make if, uh, you know, over time you've been working nights for a while and you want a, a daytime position. Uh, they do have daytime technologists, which 
basically prepare the study data for the physicians to do their interpretations, and they're also the liaison between the physicians and sometimes the patients and hospital staff. This field has allowed me to provide for my children, my wife, uh, you know, we have a house, cars, you know, we like to take trips throughout the year, uh, things like that. So it, it definitely has allowed me to provide a, a stable situation for my children to grow up in and to reduce the stress on the family. When patients present with sleep disordered breathing, it has a huge impact on their day-to-day -day lives by uh, you know, alleviating their obstructive sleep apnea through the use of CPAP or BiPAP. Um, it will help with their other issues throughout the day. It can change somebody's life. What are you up for? <laughs>